Welcome to this edition of Go Vote Omaha, presented by the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha. I'm Terry Crawford, Co-Policy Director of the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha, and your host for today's program. Today, we will be having a discussion with Denise Gales, a member of the descendants of DeWitty, a black family who founded DeWitty, Nebraska. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization and does not endorse political candidates or parties. The League does, however, take positions on issues. Our purpose is to empower voters and defend democracy. Go Vote Omaha primarily focuses on policy issues, and as a result of our discussions, we hope you will feel ready to make informed decisions at election time. Joining us today is Denise Scales. Denise, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, so we just recently celebrated our statehood for Nebraska, who came into the union in 1867. So I think it's very fitting for us to have a conversation regarding uh, descendants of DeWitty, since they also are very tied to the history of Nebraska, they were also here in the 1800s. So tell us about who descendants of DeWitty are? So I'll start with my uh, grandfather, who is William P. Walker. His mother, Anne, was a runaway slave from Kentucky. She traveled the Underground Railroad into Kentucky. Mm -hmm. There, um, Anne married, so William P. and his family, because of the Fugitive Slave Act of 1850, again was forced onto the Underground Railroad. Mm -hmm. There, they went to North Buxton, Ontario, Canada. There, um, William P., as a young youth, he became a sailor on the Great Lakes. He was also postmaster in North Buxton from 1877 to 1879. He also was a mason. Uh, he was a cooper. He made wooden barrels, and he learned that craft um, from his uh, father, and they also had a small farm in North Buxton. So William P. met my grandmother, Sarah Curtsy. Um, they were married and had three children, Amos, Karina, and Eva. And from Eva, we can trace our family back seven generations. Yes. Okay, so seven generations here in Nebraska, yes. is that right? Yes. Wow, thank you so much for that. So can we talk then uh, some about where in Nebraska DeWitty family settled and why that part of Nebraska is where they settled? So um, because of the Kincaid um, Act, or it was really back then, it was started off as the Homestead Act mm -hmm. of 1862. And so with that, it offered 160 acres of land. And so that prompted um, um, William P. and 11 other families to make their way back to Nebraska to claim um, that free land. Okay. And when they made it back to Nebraska, what county were they in? And, and talk about some of the type of land that they settled on and what their daily mm -hmm. lives would have been like when they arrived in Nebraska. So they actually arrived in Overton, Nebraska around 1880. Uh, okay. And um, they had the 11 other families with them. But when they left North Buxton, because they were in North Buxton, Ontario, Canada, it was very cold. Um, they were exceptional farmers, so they brought that skill with them when they mm -hmm. came um, to Nebraska. And also, um, North Buxton was known for their educational system, so they were also educated when they made their way back um, into Overton, Nebraska. And at that time, um, my grandmother Sarah had three more children. Robert, Margaret, and Elihu, and at that time she passed, mm -hmm. um, giving um, birth to Elihu. But at that time they had 160 um, acres um, of land. And they also took advantage of the Timber Culture Act, where they planted um, trees. Um, and they say, they suggest that that's how Arbor Day 
uh, came into um, existence. I, I read that. Okay. And so also at one time there was up to 175 families in Dewitty and um, they also owned like 29,000 acres of land between all of the families. And so they helped in the expansion um, of Nebraska. Okay. you know, as farmers and planting uh, trees. And they also uh, started the first uh, Methodist church on the DeWitty settlement and the first black school um, on the DeWitty um, settlement. So That is yes. awesome information. Yes. And thank you so much for sharing this with us today. Um, as we are nearing the close of Black History Month and we're having these conversations, it is so great to be able to know about this black family that settled in Nebraska. Talk some more about what their daily lives would have been like in DeWitty, what you have learned through family lineage and, and family conversations and some of the crops that they raised and what the school system was like. I know you come from a family of educators. So talk some about that so we can get a real feel for okay. what what the DeWitty family was like here in our own state in Nebraska. So um, William P. Wonker um, had um, two other girls from Charlotte um, Riley, his second um, wife, and they were both educators. Uh, Goldie uh, uh, was uh, ended up being a principal um, in uh, South Dakota and um, she also taught on the DeWitty um, settlement as well as Fern. Um, they were some of the first teachers on the DeWitty um, settlement along with other families that were also um, on the DeWitty um, homestead um, as well. So they lived along the North Loop River mm -hmm. where there was um, abundance of fishing um, at that time. Um, we were told that um, hogs or pigs was their main source of meat and then potatoes they used to tell us that they made potato cakes and how mm -hmm. they also uh, went and um, picked berries so that they could have uh, jam as well and so there was also another um, descendant and they called him Papa Hannah mm -hmm. he sold mules and uh, he they say he was the richest man on the um, DeWitty um, homestead and every year he would um, have a yearly uh, picnic and he would have the descendants from DeWitty and also the descendants of Brownlee, Nebraska and they would all um, play baseball and have picnics and so they, um, so, Brown, so Brownlee was an all white settlement mm -hmm. and DeWitty was an all white settlement but they knew survival was more important than their differences. Okay, yes. and thank you so much for mentioning that. Uh, one of my questions then would have been whether or not when they established the schools and the educational system, did they attend desegregated schools or were they segregated at that time in the 1800s in the settlement of DeWitty? So, um, Fern started off in district, I think it's uh, 108, mm -hmm. which was all black, but I think within a year, um, so it took them about a year to build another school. So, so the, the white and black kids did um, attend school together until they started another uh, district. Yes. Okay. And I think you mentioned that one of the family members was a principal, is that right? Um, that's um, Goldie uh, Walker. Um, she taught in DeWitty, but she also traveled to um, South Dakota um, to teach um, as well. Okay, so she would have been one of the, the traveling educators that they had during that era. Yes. That is really awesome. Yes. And mm -hmm. so like in 1949, um, they uh, recognized her as being one of the, the best um, teachers in that um, um, district. It was like 1949 at okay. that time, yes. Um, DeWitty also has a, 
uh, historical significance and also a historical marker at this time. Can you talk some about that commemorative uh, moment that took place and then also the historical marker, whether or not you and your family were able to be there uh, when they presented the marker and what that felt like for you? So that happened in 2016. So I had two members of my, um, two of my brothers did go to the ceremony um, in 2016. Mm -hmm. Um, it was the Brown Lee family and the DeWitty um, family. There was over 200 people that attended that ceremony from seven um, different um, states. And so uh, it, it was 80 years. Wow. Um, okay. DeWitty mm -hmm. ended in um, 1936. It had been 80 years and that the Brown Lees mm -hmm. and the DeWitties thought it was important to come back in 2016 to recognize um, DeWitty as an historical uh, landmark. And so they erected a marker on Highway um, 83. Okay. Yes. And that marker today is a Nebraska historical marker, is that correct? Yes. It's about 40 miles from Valentine, Nebraska. Most people are familiar with Valentine. Okay. Yes. And this is in Cherry County, is that right? It's in Cherry County, um, Nebraska. And from that celebration in 2016, uh, my brother and myself, we said, oh my God, this is important and we need to tell this story. Mm -hmm. So we created our nonprofit, Descendants of DeWitty, um, Nebraska. And from that, um, we created a 27 piece gallery exhibit, which is now featured at Durham Museum until May the 28th of 2023. We also have a traveling photo exhibit with um, live historical uh, reenactments. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have an animated project on Humanities Nebraska website, along with the lesson plan that was created by um, my sister, um, Avis Roper, who is a um, educator for over 32 uh, years. And we also have a book written by uh, for Stiff, who is also um, a descendant and a family member and a stage play. Awesome. We do, we've done all that, that is wonderful. So let's talk about each one of those pieces. First, talk some about the organization of Descendants of DeWitty. When was that created? Uh, what are some of the things that you do as a corporation? We talk some about the book and mm -hmm. uh, we will talk some more about the live production because I've been fortunate enough to be able to see that. Okay. So talk some about the corporation and the steps that you took to be incorporated in the state of Nebraska, whether or not that reaches into uh, Ontario or some of the other areas where some of the original descendants came from. And, and what does that look like for you as a family right now? So um, right now, as the descendants of DeWitty, um, when we met in 2016, I met family members that I didn't know mm -hmm. that I had. And from that, um, we have grown. I met um, my cousin, uh, Joyce Ann Gray, who is also an historian. She lives in North Carolina, and she has written three books on um, the descendants of DeWitty, um, Nebraska. I have met um, families from the Riley branch um, that are still um, residing um, in Western uh, Nebraska. And then we cannot forget about um, Mr. Um, Delbert DeWitty. Mm -hmm. His father, his grandfather is Miles DeWitty. Um, he's the one who established um, the name um, DeWitty, he came from um, up out of Texas and he built the first post office. I think it was incorporated in 1915, uh, so we cannot leave the DeWitty uh, family out, yes. Absolutely, mm -hmm. so that postmaster position that he held, would that have been in the DeWitty settlement? Yes, that was mm -hmm. actually in the, 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 the oops, excuse me, the DeWitty settlement along the North um, Loop uh, River. Okay, you talk some about the books that were done by your cousin. If someone was interested in purchasing some of those books, how would one do that? Are they available in the public library? Is it a like an Amazon purchase? How would that happen? So um, her books are on Amazon. 
um, under um, Joyce and Gray, and then the books will um, pop up. I don't know the titles of okay. each of the books, but her books are on uh, Amazon. Okay, and maybe we can get some of that information yes. later for yes. some of the viewers that are watching okay. this. So I have seen some of the live productions with some of the reenactments. Mm -hmm. Please tell our viewers about some of that because it is just wonderful to see from the costuming to the actors mm -hmm. to some of the storylines. Can you talk some about uh, what all goes into the live production and possibly give us uh, a sneak peek of what uh, a particular story that touches your heart uh, that has been part of the production? So one of the uh, ones that I, I portray, mm -hmm. my grandmother, uh, Sarah Kirksey, um, she talks about when she was um, living in North Buxton, um, they had a bell um, in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. And every time a new family would come, they would ring the bell three times. And then everyone would come out and welcome that family. So Sarah's father owned the stall mill in North Buxton, and so he would help um, provide the wood to build homes for new families that arrived in North Buxton. But when they heard the bell ringing fast and hard, they knew sometimes the bounty hunters were coming back to try to take them back across um, the border. So that's one of my favorites. Um, in our um, our skits, and so when we first started our production, um, we rented our um, costumes, mm -hmm. and then later my sister um, Avis um, Roper start sewing <laughs> our our costumes. Okay. Yes. I'd love to be able to paint a very vivid picture for those that are viewing this as to what some of those costumes from that era really looks like when you do the production. And uh, you also uh, said, as you were describing the role that you did with mm -hmm. your, your grandmother, yes. I believe you said, you said she, but it was actually you. It was me. <laughs> portraying portraying her as Sarah. In your voice, and I remember seeing <laughs> that, and it says, if those individuals are coming to life as a result of this production. So whose brainchild was that, that we are now gonna do this as a family? And what are rehearsals like? And then please talk some more about those costumings. Uh, I'd love to be able to paint that picture. So um, with our costumes, they're in um, historical um, attire. Mm -hmm. And so we will stand in front of a particular um, photograph I should have brought some with me. And we make that photograph come to life. Mm -hmm. And uh, whoever we're standing in front of, we will portray that. So my sister, um, Avis Roper, she portrays my aunt, Karina, and she's a healer. And um, she does, um, she portrays um, Karina as a healer. Uh, she blows dust out. She gives them um, examples of oils and herbs of how to, you know, how she used to heal mm -hmm. um, people on the um, DeWitty um, homestead. So she brings you into um, the production she because it's so does. it's so personal. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, people will come and say, "Can you pray for me?" And they'll ask her about the oils um, mm -hmm. that they used um, at that time. So it's very it's a very powerful uh, production. It is very powerful. I've seen it, and it actually places you into that historical moment. Yes. Um, talk some about the exhibit at Durham. Uh, some of the photos that are there, I think you said 27? Yes. Tell us about some of those photos and what's depicted. Uh, this is huge for this to happen at the Durham, how all of that came together and how long the exhibit will be there. Okay, so the exhibit um, is 27 um, gallery photos in uh, frames. Uh, it starts with um, uh, William P. Walker. It talks, it goes all the way through his whole life from when he was in Canada all the way until he ended up in, uh, the, in to, until he ended up in um, DeWitty. Mm -hmm. And so it talks about his daughters being teachers. Um, it talks about um, Reverend Burkhardt who um, uh, built the first church in DeWitty. 
It talks about the Riley family, Papa Hannah. Uh, there's pictures uh, with the um, DeWitty Post Office. So it's the whole, uh, really DeWitty, DeWitty saga. It's, mm -hmm. it's right there in front of you. Okay. Yes. How long will the exhibit be at the Durham? So the pictures will be at the Durham until uh, May the 28th of 2023. Okay. And will individuals who visit the uh, Durham Museum, are they able to talk to family members? Will you be there or someone else curating to be able to have the conversations to kind of bring those pictures to life? So right now we just have placards mm -hmm. um, on the uh, pictures so we're not um, there to actually tell people um, okay. about the uh, photos um, at this time. Okay. Uh, which of those are your favorites? I, I know for me, I saw one that really reminded me of like a Harriet Tubman. I, I describe her as a cowgirl. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe she had on a black hat. Mm -hmm. So uh, of those photos, which one would you, several that you would pick as your favorites and please tell our audience why? So I think the most important one to me is probably uh, the school because education um, was really important to William P. Um, Walker. So he knew that education and land ownership was the key to economic freedom. So that's why I'm gonna say um, education. And then we have a picture called Sunday Morning where the, um, everyone from the settlement, they came to church because they were spiritual people. And then the photo that you're talking about is with Fern on the horse. Mm -hmm. So Fern was also a teacher, but her father taught her how to shoot because that was normal. They were on uh, out in the um, prairie. There were rattlesnakes. And if she had her gun, she could shoot a rabbit and bring it home for dinner. So that was normal. But then there's also another uh, picture, and I'm not sure if you, if you saw it, and that's with um, Margaret, and she's got her pretty white dress on, her cowboy hat, and her holster, yes. and her holster on. So it was common for women um, to tote guns because mm -hmm. it was a part of survival at that time. But those are powerful, uh, powerful. pictures. Yes. Uh, you've talked uh, some about uh, education being important in your family now for both you and your sister and other members of your family and how important that was for the settlement in DeWitty. Yes. This was at a time in the 1800s and late 1800s, early 1900s, when we had a very segregated country, particularly in our educational system. We know what it looked like in the South. I think some of them may have been part of the Great Migration. Mm -hmm. Some of them also came from the area uh, near um, the Canadian border. So talk some about what you know uh, was the school system in DeWitty. I think you said that it was desegregated, so the white children and the black children went to school together. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So um, they brought, because North Buxton had a, a great educational system, again, you know, they brought that with them when they came to uh, Nebraska, so William P knew that education was important. So building that schoolhouse and getting the kids um, educated um, was key again to economic freedom. So his oldest son, um, Amos, he was an educator. Fern was an educator. Uh, Goldie was an educator. Uh, Sweet, she um, was a um, masseuse, but she received that training in um, Missouri. And because there was not a lot of jobs there in DeWitty, they received their education and then they moved mostly to Missouri mm -hmm. um, where they had more freedoms and more um, opportunities. So they settled in places like Horton, Nebraska, Topeka, Oh, Topeka, Kansas, mm -hmm. Horton, Kansas, and um, St. Joe. Okay. Yes, Missouri. I'm very interested in knowing, because I know you're an educator by profession, and so is your sister and maybe others in the family. Did you have this DeWitty history about your educational lineage when you decided that that was going to be your profession? 
No, so um, my sister um, Avis is the only um, educator. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, it seems odd that we went into the education. Avis, um, Avis always had children with her, mm -hmm. even when she didn't have any kids. So it's just like it was instilled um, in us to uh, be um, educators and to uh, to bring the community in and help them because my mother and father were also community um, leaders with um, Habitat mm -hmm. of uh, Nebraska. Um, so they were also involved in the community. And so I just feel like that spirit was passed down through our um, ancestors, okay. yes. Denise, thank you so much for that. Um, I would also like to know and would like our audience to know that if there's um, one thing uh, that you'd like everyone to know about DeWitty is how we can make sure that this full history is really known in Nebraska mm -hmm. because it's basically unknown because it's not in the curriculum. Um, but I know because I know the family, okay. now we have it at Durham. How do we spread this information so that this becomes as well known as any other Nebraska history? What would be your wish for that to happen? So my wish is that our 27-piece um, gallery um, exhibit makes its way to the Smithsonian. So that's our biggest um, vision. And I really feel like we'll be blessed um, with that opportunity through um, Durham Museum and the National Park Service, who we have also partnered with over um, the years, um, telling the story of the descendants of DeWitty. And then I would also um, like to get back into um, the Omaha Public Schools. We were in there before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so we haven't had an opportunity to get back into that um, system, but I know those doors will also um, open for us um, as, as well. Okay. Denise, I cannot thank you enough mm -hmm. for being here with us today. I wanna thank you for your time, for this information, mm -hmm. very important history about Nebraska. So thank you for speaking with us and joining our program. We can't thank you enough again. Okay. Um, for the League of Women Voters of Greater Omaha, I'm Terry Crawford, reminding you to inform yourself about issues and candidates and be ready to go vote Omaha. <laughs>